What's up, Everyday Blades? So, today, um, we are going to do a short review, since we just did a first impressions. We're going to do a quick review of this, and then we're going to do a disassembly and see what makes this thing tick. So, this is the Stitch Ramlock. I believe it's the same size and layout as the original Stitch Auto, but... Let's take a couple of measurements. So the blade length is three and three quarter. Handle length, total five inches. The blade is, the cutting edge is pretty short. Uh, right at three inches on the money. I love that thumb hole. That, that thumb hole is the perfect thumb hole opener. I'm just... I'm a fan of everything Borka, and then when you throw Marfion in the mix, it's just like a clash of the titans. So, if you're not familiar, the Stitch is a manual version of the, the Stitch Ramlock. This here, kind of a loosely based version of the Axis Lock, but the only thing it has in common with the Axis Lock is it's in the same spot and kind of functions the same way. That's where the similarities end, because they've done a much better job. Uh, we got T20 pivot, T8 uh, body screws, titanium backspacer, steel liners, G10 scales, both sides. Nice pocket clip with the perfect amount of spring and tension. They just did a fantastic job. It's just a killer knife. So let's find out what, what makes it tick. <clears throat> well, let's look at uh, a couple of size comparisons real quick in case you haven't handled one. Here is a... Pinch made griptilian. You can see it's not a small knife. Uh, it's, not, it's not a huge overly bearing knife because of the the shape of it, but it's definitely not a small knife. There's a pair of three. So it, it's a good size knife compared to your smaller, you know, traditional EDC. But it's a Borka Marfion. That's all you need to know. So let's check it out. Let's take off our T20 pivot. haven't had this one apart. I took apart my um, MSI when I got it and cleaned it and lubed it up. Make sure there was no uh, machine parts or anything in it. This is my uh, Shira Gorov driver. I love this thing. It holds standard bits and Shira Gorov proprietary bits and all the Shira Gorov bits are in the trunk. So You just unscrew it and they pop out. Fits most Shira Gorovs. Wow! That one had some bite to her. It's got some, it's like a whitish Loctite. Hopefully this one's a little kinder to us, yeah. That one just had some extra Loctite and some extra ump on it. So then the scale comes off real easily. Then they have a, this plate that kind of holds the assembly together. So the G10 is not really holding anything together. And these screws are different size and different colors than the body screws, so they're they're shorter, they're easier to tell apart. I love knives that come apart really easily. I think it tells a whole lot about the knife. When I can get it apart easily and get it back together easily, it's a well-built knife. A good example of that is Grimm's Mode, man. They, their knives are so easy to disassemble. And I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more. but So there's your plate, and you can see it's notched right there. So it's not a free spinning pivot. And then this is a super easy assembly. This just picks up. Push it down. Let's see it's super easy. It's, it's not complicated is what I mean. There you go. Comes off as three pieces. A spring. Your back rod. And the button. Super easy. Not a bunch of parts going everywhere. And you slide your blade off. You got multi row bearings on both sides, which is what's expected these days for a nice knife. And there you go. I don't see any reason to take it down any further. It's only a backspacer and a liner. So there she is. Simple, simple. We like simple. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reassemble in kind of a different manner. I'm gonna put my button here. I'm going to stick my spring up in there and then just push it over. 
reassembled that easy. Love it. Some of these knives, man, you have to turn tricks to get these things back together. <clears throat> They're just built with bad tolerance or something. It's just bad designs. Not a lot of them, but I've taken apart a lot of knives and enough of them have been very difficult to get apart and get back together. This is super easy. And it's the way it should be because to properly clean your knife, <clears throat> if you use this knife to, you know, gut an animal or something like that, you're not just want to wash it out with Dawn dishwashing soap. You don't want to be carrying that crap around. You're going to have to disassemble it to properly clean it. Okay, so we got one, two. One, I was thinking there was three, but I guess there's only two of those screws. So let's push our... Oh, you know what? I might want to put the blade in it first, huh? Sitting here yapping about how easy it is, and I missed the easiest part. <laughs> Come on, boy. Alright. We got enough oil on our blade to hold our bearings in there. This is all very clean. That's why I'm not cleaning any of this. I'm not going to take out the oil they put in there. Get in there, boy. You can do it. There we go. Swing. Now. I'm going to set this plate back over here. Let's disengage that. Push that down. Close that. So we don't cut ourselves again. That's not fun. If you work on knives a lot, you're going to cut yourself. It's just part of it. It's just going to happen. I don't care who you are. Of course, back in the day, I had a lot thicker calluses than I do now when I worked in the field. But now I'm a manager, so I don't have those thick calluses to protect me. But a lot of my knives are super, super sharp. It doesn't take much. <clears throat> so then we're going to plop our scale back on. I like the way the scale is completely independent of the knife. The knife still functions without the scale. When I first bought the first stitch, I thought that when I saw that matte black I bought, I thought it was G10. I was like, man, I love that. Then I found that it was like painted or anodized aluminum. I didn't, I didn't care for that. That was one of the things I didn't like about it. And then the other thing was that it was an auto. You know, autos kind of brought me to knife collecting and, uh, I quickly got tired of them, just didn't care for them because I didn't see a use in it. It was fascinating at first, but after that I wanted something with really great action and it was just a lot more appealing to me than auto, so didn't keep the stitch around. But this one, this is exactly what I hoped for when I first saw it, man. That's just what I thought it was, I hoped it was, but now they got it right, man. I'm a huge fan. So, uh, I sold the MSI today and people are like, oh no, you said such great things about that MSI. Why'd you sell it? Well, the thing is I review a lot of knives and a big chunk of them I have to purchase. So sometimes I have to make decisions. This is very similar to the MSI. I mean, they work the same. They got the same materials for about the same size. You got to make decisions. You know, I, I have a lot of knives. I just can't keep every one of them that I like. So I, I made a decision to sell that one and keep this one and use those funds to purchase another knife to review. So, this is the one that's sticking around. The M, I would not be disappointed if I kept the MSI. That is a great knife. It's built just as well as this. It's just something about the stitch has always had a special place in my heart. And I think it's because it's a Borka. I'm a huge Borka fan. Borka Blades makes killer knives. They just design beautiful knives. So, anyway, guys, please subscribe if you're not. Uh, so, I can keep bringing you this great content. Uh, God bless you and your family. Say a prayer for our country. Good night.